province surrounded by water, Nova Scotia has always been tested by the power of the Atlantic Ocean. It's what's shaped our amazing and diverse coastal landscapes, and these landscapes could hold some of the secrets to preparing us for the challenges of climate change. Coastal communities and lands are at risk. Sea level rise, storm surges, and coastal erosion are threatening communities and their cultural and economic resources. The time to act is now. But how can we protect these important parts of our East Coast heritage when we're up against all that? Tidal wetlands, beaches, and dune systems are the first line of defense that protect our coastal communities from the effects of severe storm events and climate change. Unfortunately, over the past 400 years, many of these important coastal habitats have been lost due to agricultural diking and development pressures. Diking was first introduced to Nova Scotia by the Acadians in the 17th century. It allowed them to convert the ecologically productive salt marshes in the Bay of Fundy into usable agricultural land. Today, many Acadian heritage sites, like Grand Pre, are protected behind large modern dike and apoiteau systems. These new larger dikes, built with modern machinery, are in different locations from the original Acadian ones, but are still protecting much of the same land. But dikes protect much more than just agricultural land. For a UNESCO World Heritage Site, like Grand Pre, the protection provided by the dikes is critical. The variety of lands protected by dikes presents a challenge to our provincial agencies, who are responsible for managing these defense systems. The building of dikes and tidal barriers, such as causeways, over the last 60 years has created opportunities for agriculture, coastal communities, and businesses, all of which play vital roles in local economies across Nova Scotia. But these opportunities have come at the cost of our coastal habitats, which also contribute significantly to the health, well-being, and economy of our province. The degradation and loss of coastal habitats like salt marshes makes our province vulnerable to climate change, which could have significant consequences for people's homes and livelihoods. There are 364 kilometers of dikes and 260 abwateaux in the Bay of Fundy. The Nova Scotia Department of Agriculture, who is responsible for maintaining the dikes in Nova Scotia, does not currently have the resources to raise or maintain all of that infrastructure. In many locations, it may not be feasible to keep raising the dikes in response to climate change. In the coming years, there will need to be some tough decisions made regarding the future of our dikes and coastal protection infrastructure. It's becoming vital that we find ways to protect and adapt our coastal developments, like our dikes, from the increasing power of the ocean. Thankfully, there are a lot of people working on that very problem right here in Nova Scotia. Transcoastal Adaptations Center for Nature-Based Solutions was born out of the long-standing collaborative partnership between St. Mary's University and CB Wetlands and Environmental Specialists. They are working closely with the Department of Agriculture to identify vulnerable and at-risk dikes. Decisions need to be made on which dikes are to be maintained, raised up, or moved back in order to increase the amount of protective buffer between the water and our important agricultural lands, communities, and infrastructure. For the Transcoastal Adaptations team, this area is a key location for coastal adaptation projects and is the site of the groundbreaking Making Room for Wetlands project. In recent years, particularly with St. Mary's University and the Department of Agriculture, we've been looking at vulnerable dike land systems in the Bay of Fundy, and where feasible, working with the local marsh bodies and local communities to actually identify and opportunities to reduce that vulnerability and that risk by stepping the dikes back or moving the dikes back from the water's edge in order for salt marshes and other coastal habitats to re-establish and uh, in order to become the primary line of defense protecting that agricultural infrastructure and communities. The overall goal of these projects is to increase the resilience of coastal communities to climate change impacts by providing a framework for the implementation of nature-based climate change adaptation strategies. We are also demonstrating the success of these projects through actual managed realignment where we are designing, implementing and then monitoring the restoration trajectory of salt marshes that are going to be created as we move dikes back in those particular areas. Ultimately, the framework and the demonstration projects will allow coastal communities, government officials, planners and residents to be able to choose innovative nature-based solutions to climate change impacts. Simply put, the Making Room for Wetlands project has five steps. Engage, gather baseline data, 
design, implement, and monitor. This work is building on over a decade of collaboration between SMU and CB West. Let's break it down. The project is working with the Department of Agriculture to engage with area stakeholders to determine the risks and concerns regarding local dikes. Continued co-design ensures that heritage is preserved and points of local interest are protected. Sites for this project have been chosen based on vulnerability of the existing dike and ensuring minimal impact to landowners and users. Focusing on sites with at-risk dikes that can no longer be maintained allows transcoastal adaptations to address potential risks associated with climate change, such as storm surges and flooding. Once the sites have been chosen, the Transcoastal Adaptations team creates a design tailored to the needs and unique characteristics of the area. Once unique needs or considerations have been noted, the team generates models for potential areas to be restored. The third step of the process is earthworks, when, under the guidance of the Department of Agriculture and the Transcoastal Adaptations team, construction crews will implement the chosen designs. The on-site construction can include relocating or raising roads, culvert removal, culvert replacement, removing an old avoiteau, shoreline stabilization, excavation of tidal channels, realigning or upgrading existing sections of a dike, building new inner dikes, and the breaching of the old dike. This is done to encourage foreshore marsh regrowth, which provides buffers from wave energy, absorbs floodwaters, and provides ecological habitat. The work is done carefully to ensure that it is well suited to each site and appropriate for the resources being protected. Site monitoring is done both pre and post construction. Over five years, the team monitors a range of physical and biological indicators of salt marsh health, such as surface elevation, hydrology, plant community, soils, sediments, and more. Using these steps allows the Transcoastal Adaptations team to properly assess, realign, and monitor dikes and restore tidal wetlands in order to protect what lies behind them. If you're watching this and thinking, I'm concerned about a dike land or shoreline in my community, is it suitable for this kind of work? And who can I contact for more information? Then you're in luck. Transcoastal Adaptations website is full of information on this project and their closely related Making Room for Movement project. Reach out to the team using their contact form at www.transcoastaladaptations.ca to learn more. Making Room for Wetlands is a five-year project that is generously funded through the Department of Fisheries and Oceans Coastal Restoration Fund. The Transcoastal Adaptations team is excited to have this opportunity to work with the province, their partners, and communities throughout Nova Scotia. Through this partnership, the team will bring their expertise in using nature-based adaptations and solutions to a variety of coastal sites. This project is only the first step in protecting Atlantic Canada from the effects of climate change.